Hi everyone. A bit late again, but almost there. Um, yeah, great. Um, okay, so what should I do next? I should uh, put a bit of music. have music very soon. Excellent. I hope you can hear me well. Yes, you can. It would seem at least. Today we're going to do some things quite nice. But before that, I'd like to make sure so I'm on mute. Uh, there is some light in the room. My mic is working. We have with the music, I have a headset. So everything should be fine. Hey, Mathieu, very glad to see you. So Mathieu, we should uh, we should have some uh, very nice uh, content for today. Um, as a fellow plugin developer, you will uh, you will appreciate. Um, yeah, I think we we good. Let me just close a couple of tabs. OK, good. Let me close the Slack to save a bit of memory. And we should be fine. So uh, welcome, we are still in the series uh, where one hour per week we are developing a, a plugin for Giphy. Um, it's the eighth uh, session uh, and we are making great progress after, after the first uh, sessions that were pretty hard for the setup. Now we, we run uh, at a good pace. Where we are is that we have a, um, we have a window in Giphy where we can launch the plugin. What the plugin does is uh, analyzing uh, a textual attribute for the nodes, and it just counts the most frequent terms from, this from these attributes. And it shows the top, term, the, the top 10 terms um, on, you know, on the panel in Giphy. Um, it's not as simple as it, as it sounds because the, um, it's not just counting terms. There is some uh, cleaning being done, some uh, some uh, qualitative tokenization. Um, uh, the cleaning uh, consists in removing the stop words um, in English, at least. Uh, we should add uh, at a later stage other languages. It's a matter of adding language selection in the UI of the plugin. Uh, so we are there, uh, and we have added last week a, 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 a drop-down menu that, let me show you where we are. Basically, we're going to launch the plugin, and you're going to see it. Uh, we have added a, a drop-down menu that allows the user to uh, select which attribute should be analyzed. You know, uh, nodes can have plenty of textual attributes, so you should choose which attribute will... will uh, 
will be selected for the text mining and we have struggled and succeeded last week at creating a drop down menu for the user to select the attribute. The attribute did not appear um, in the uh, in the drop down menu, but we were super close to having it. Oh, interesting. Um, you don't see my screen. That should be that should be fixed quite easily. Bear with me, please. Uh, yes, this one, I suppose. Yes, great. So where were we last week? Uh, 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 so this is the code that you see, but I like to show you the plugin in Giphy. Ah, oh, shit! I don't have my I don't have my keyboards with all my shortcuts. Please, uh, I'm gonna get and fetch it. Uh, I need ten seconds. And we're back. Yeah, that should be fine. Please let me know if that doesn't work. So this is Giphy at the moment. I should zoom in uh, on the plugin, which is a bit cramped on the left. So we can expand on it. Yeah, so that's the plugin. Uh, well, I hope you see it on my screen. It's pretty well. I think you see it well. Uh, oops, and I should. I should do no, not that. I should do. I should do something like, yeah, like that, so that you see me looking at the screen. Um, so the plugin is there. We open a, a file, a network. Uh, where is the? So we had a. We had a network that consists in um, the network of the Twitter accounts that the New York Times is following. That was provided by Flef, and uh, I can't remember where it is, but uh, it should be nearby. Oh, I remember where it is. It's hidden somewhere. And this one. Shit, where did I put it? Hmm. That's that's embarrassing. Where did I put this network?
Okay, I have to find the network. Uh... Oh, I'm stupid, it was just there. Okay, found it. Uh, so back in Giphy, we want to open a graph that has a textual attribute. This graph, I've just found it. Okay, it's opening. Oops. Do you see it? Yeah, you see it here. Maybe if I zoom in here, yeah, not too bad. So 292 nodes uh, and plenty of edges. So there's going to be a hubble. Okay, I open it. That's there. Now, if we look at the attributes in the data lab, If we look at the attributes of the nodes, we see that it has a description attribute, which is the bio, you know, the biography of the Twitter accounts. And this, this is full of text. So what we would like, back to the overlay, overview, and back to our plugin here. Do you see it? Not completely. What we would like is that the list of nodes attributes would appear there. Uh, and I think I fixed it. That was the issue we had last time. Uh, I think if we go back to the code, you'll see that uh, actually I have fixed that uh, right away in the end, after we finished the stream, because it was bugging me, literally. Uh, <clears throat> So where is it? How did I fix that? That was a very simple. Uh... Yeah, I think that's there. So if, so this is, we are in the method that gets triggered when we click on, on the refresh button. The refresh button is supposed to, let me show it there. The refresh button that you see there is supposed to, you know, when a graph is not opened, we should have no attributes there, right? But a gra when a graph opens, Clicking on refresh should populate the drop down menu with the list of their textual attributes. So, clicking on this button right there triggers uh, uh, how can you, you see it better? Triggers this method, you know, this function there. So, that, what does this function do? So it creates an empty list of things to show in the, in the drop-down menu. And then if the graph model is null, so if there is no graph open in Gephi, it will, oh, no, so not, not exactly. If the graph model, which we use in this plugin, is null, then we retrieve the graph model of the currently opened network. Exactly, that's what it does. Right. GM stands for graph model, and it's not super uh, explicit, right? So I'm going to just uh, change the name of the variables of the variable. So if the graph model that we use in in uh, uh, in the plugin is, is, is not existing, then we retrieve the graph that is currently opened. And if it's still null, 
because there was no graph open in Giphy, then we just show, uh, you know, if it's null, then we just show an empty uh, list of attributes. But if there was a graph currently open in Giphy, then we just, uh, we just extract the name of all its textual attributes and we and we add them to the list once we have this list we can attach it to the drop down menu uh, and that's it so that was fixed again um, like in the minutes that followed uh, last week and uh, and I can show you that it works. So this is the graph, the huge graph of network followers, not many, uh, not followers, friends of uh, the New York Times and all the connections between them. There is no secret there. Uh, the, follow, uh, the New York Times account is following New York Times journalists and all New York Times journalists follow each other. So it, this, it ends up with this big mess. But now when I click on refresh there, we should see the list of textual attributes. Yeah, so you, let me zoom in. ID, label, or description. So I pick description. How many words do we want to display? 10. And we click on run. Oh yes, it works. I was afraid. Uh, so the list can't be really read there. You see it's cropped at the top and at the bottom, but uh, for a start, it's pretty good. It's ranked from the most frequent New York Times to Times to Reporter to HTTPS. We should definitely remove HTTPS. Author, Chief Bureau, Author, Covering. Anyway, pretty good. What we want to do now, uh, oh yes, I almost forgot. Um, is two things. I would like to show you the, well, um, no, one thing. We want to be able, look at, uh, look at that. We want that the, the top terms uh, that are displayed there are not the top terms from the entirety of the graph, but only from a sub-selection. Uh, what is a sub-selection? So in Giphy, you can click on this, I think it's this one, yeah. Uh, in French, it's called uh, rec rectangle de selection, so uh, a rectangle-shaped selection. I click on it, and then I can, I think it's here or here. Oops, 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 what did I do? Oh yeah, I just, I don't know exactly what I did. Uh, so rect rect selection uh, zone uh, in the shape of a rectangle. And, oh yeah, okay, very simple. And you can, as you see, right, you can se select a rectangle. Uh, but that's not exactly the one I had in mind. There's a second one, which is, yeah, the arrow right on top, maybe, if I can zoom in. Yeah, you see better. Yeah, this arrow. So you can select nodes, but it's super hard because the arrow points, you know, points, has a very precise selection. So what you can do is click on select, uh, on configuration there and it will allow you to increase the diameter as a, as, a, as a cycle. Look at that, right? It increases the area being selected through the arrow, the two point. So now, I hope you see the effect, but as I move the arrow, Everything inside the, cy the cycle is being selected. What I would like to achieve is the fact that the top 10 terms that you see there uh, are the ones from the nodes inside the selection. 
And so in terms of coding, it's interesting to do. But uh, more, you know, in terms of use case, uh, it's interesting because uh, uh, when you do exploration of a graph, you are curious about, you know, this region or that region. Uh, that's the very classic, uh, uh, yeah, way of exploring a graph. But how do you select a, a sub-region? Uh, and work on it. Well, well, well. Uh, uh, yesterday, Eduardo, uh, who is the uh, the maintainer of Giphy nowadays with Master Bastion, very kindly gave me a pointer to do that. So let's do that. Back to the code. I was just playing with it uh, right before the stream. That's why I was a bit late. And Eduardo pointed to me that there is something that uh, uh, there is a module in Giphy that handles exactly uh, this selection uh, mechanism and that allows you to play with it. Uh, so it's so easy, basically, we just have to uh, instantiate a viz for visualization, a viz controller, and then it's going to provide us with uh, plenty of methods to use, and we're going to just pick the methods that we that we need. Uh, as you see, I was just writing these two lines of code um, in the main body of the. Uh, Actually, even in the yeah in the constructor of of the panel, but that should go elsewhere. I don't know. I know where it's gonna go. Uh, at some, uh, I'm gonna tr just write a couple of lines of code and then I'm gonna uh, move them to to a proper place. But first, how do you instantiate a visualization controller? Uh, it's always the same. You uh, you retrieve it through, uh, how can I zoom in? Yeah, great, that's better. You retrieve an instance of this class with this very weird looking um, call, the lookup, you look, uh, you call uh, a lookup on this class and it returns uh, an instance of this class. So super nice. And that's how you get a, a visualization controller. And as you see, I was just playing with what kind of methods do you have there? And look at that, you have plenty of stuff. I don't know everything. You have create canvas. I don't know what a canvas is. That looks nice. That looks nice. Um, but we don't need that. What I was seeing is get, you see, there's a get node text columns. That's funky. But that's not what we need. We just need that get selected edges and get selected nodes. I would expect these things to return the currently selected edges and nodes. I mean, you know, at the moment when this method is called, it returns the, uh, uh, the nodes and the edges being currently selected. But if the user is dragging their mouse uh, uh, quickly, when you call this method, get selected edges, well, as soon as the user has moved their mouse, the selected edges have changed. So it's, I don't know exactly how to, to handle that. Uh, but there is, there, there are some interesting stuff like, where was it? Yeah, that was the manager, get the selection manager. So, and then it has methods.
and there is you can add a change listener so I'm super bad at listeners uh, but maybe I will have to learn um, so you can disable selections you can block selection You can remove the change listener. Is selection updated while dragging? I don't know. Set selection update while dragging. So that should be set to true, right? Right. You would like the selection to update while dragging. So I'm going to put true there. I suppose true is the default, but. Um, OK, I'm going to experiment. That's going to be weird. Uh, do I do these exper experiments? Yes, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, so first, maybe before I do that, maybe I want to instance, uh, I want to store this selection manager in an object. Okay, you see it, yeah. And this is where I'm gonna be freaking change listener. So first, I'm going to, as I said, set selection update while dragging. I set that to true. And then a change listener. What is this thing? I'm going to create one and see if it complains that it's an interface or something. Oh, sorry. Oh. So, yeah, and of course it complains. So, I suppose it's a default <laughs> change listener. No, doesn't like it. Or mouse change listener. No. Okay, so the result is that we're gonna go on the web and learn. Oops. So we're gonna learn together. Swing. Swing is the framework in, that we are using and that NetBeans and Giphy are using to, uh, to uh, create the user interface. So Java Swing, change listener. And if I type that, I'm gonna have examples. How to write a change listener, yeah, why not? So there is a slider. Or maybe I should go and check the source code of Giphy to see how they are using it. Yeah, that's also a good idea. So I'm on the source code of Giphy and I'm gonna search for change listener in this repo. And so that's the result. Let's try this one. Okay. 
So there is a change event. Okay. It's not super complicated, it seems. Change recenter. It's just how do you instantiate one? That's the thing. Uh, oops, is okay. Trying another file, another bit of code. How do they handle change listeners? Fire change event. That's nice. Where is fire change event? Oh, that's uh, okay. Uh, well, I'm not. Let's. Uh, we're gonna dig and try and. Well, maybe I'm gonna go back to the Oracle. Uh, I'm gonna back go back to the. Pourquoi est-il autorisé Non. Um, ok, ok, that's it, that's there. So maybe it's something that. Oh. Well. Okay, I'm not sure we need one. Super complicated, but also it's also. I think I need to go back to the code of Giphy.
Okay, so we have a, a selection manager which keeps an updated the section manager is here. It keeps an updated uh, information on which nodes and edges are currently selected. We would like to have the plugin Uh, we would like to have the plugin picking up the information on any change in the selection to do something when such an event occurs. Can we? Can we? Yeah, I think I understand. Oh, that's complete. I think I got it. I get it. I think oh, that's complicated. Uh, I think I get it. Uh, wow, wow, wow. Um, so I need no. Come on. I need to create a change listener. How? Uh, as a, I'm gonna create a class which is a change listener, but why? How can I do that? I would like to have a great tutorial on that. It's an interface. Okay. So, so let's go. I'm not good at that, but I think that I can create a, a class which is going to be called uh, selection change listener. And I've never done that. Let's try that. You know, it's going to have an interface. And if I click on browse, I wonder if it's going to give me change listener. I've never used this. Yeah, it exists. Yeah, you see it here, so I can select it here and finish. So I've created this class. What I don't understand is that it's supposed to have methods that need to be override. Oh yeah, overridden, sorry. So yes. I implement all the abstract methods. I and this is where I think, you know, um, this is where we could do stuff like refresh the text mining. If the state has changed, uh, so we're going to just do a, a hello world. If the state has changed, uh, update the, you know, the show something in the plugin. Uh, the ugly thing is that how can I update something in the, in the plugin from here, from this method? Uh, 
Yeah, it's really sure. I have no training on that, and that's really difficult. Uh, <clears throat> so we could hack it, right? We could just have a static method. But that's ugly. When the state has changed, When the state has changed, uh, you should uh, update something. So maybe I can just again try and uh, swing update update uh, label when you know. Update the glabels label during the event. Yeah, maybe something like that. Oh no. I had the same issue with the with another plugin. Okay, that's complicated. Well, we'll do a hello world. Just to see if this method is triggered or executed at least. Okay, um, what happens? So we add it here. The selection manager, we have it. And we instantiate this listener. What does it do? Build it, come on. Uh, selection change listener test. And we add it to the selection managers listeners because it can have 
listeners. Okay, so now I would expect that each time the selection changes, the selection change listener is uh, triggered. So we should have a hello world, which is uh, wow. Well, this this variable is is uh, filled with this value every time that the selection changes. And what I would have preferred to have is something that would have uh, updated the label. Uh, how can we do that? Let me, I'm going to have to open the other plugin I had created. And Mathieu Bastion had helped me a lot to achieve this, you know, communication between this communication between um, between the UI that should be updated when something in the code is happening. But that was pretty complex and he had done it for me, so I'm not, I'm not super familiar with that. So. So in this case, we had a runnable. Which could be triggered. Oh, no, not here. I'm trying to find a code that uh, creates a bridge between the code log the, the business logic and the UI. You see add action listener here. Oh yeah, but that's really stupid. That's like, that's a nice way to just describe uh, how a button can uh, just uh, fire or something. Okay, and this is the part where we have an executor that executes some business logic. And when the business logic returns, oh, that's complicated. Okay, so that's a that's an error handler, so we don't care. I mean, we don't care. We do care, but. Uh, Okay, that's complicated, but I think I can understand. So 
that's a long time task executor. You instantiate it. You put a default error handler. And when is the publish runnable? So that's a long task listener. So when a long task finishes, when a long task finishes, where is that? Yeah, I think I, I more or less understand. It's uh, so you launch, uh, you instantiate a runnable, you launch the runnable, uh, and as it is, the funny thing is that as it is a, a long task, you can actually listen to it where is the listening stuff yeah here set long task listener that's pretty strange but uh, that should work so in our case I'm just curious, I mean, time is running. Is it the case that... So I'm gonna, and that's the second part I wanted to show today, how to use the debugger in NetBeans. It's super easy actually. So we're gonna use it now to see if when the selection changes, do we have, um, do we have a, a method that gets triggered? You know, the method in, uh, the method that we called uh, selection, selection change listener, we have a method called state changes, changed. So does it change Gs or is it called this method when the selection changes? So to know that we're gonna uh, launch the plugin in debugging mode. So we start by cleaning and building the lexical explorer plugin, which I do now. Or if he's still running, I should uh, stop it. And you're going to see that it takes just a few seconds to compile and and build the plugin. Uh, 
I, I did that when OBS, you know, the software to stream, to help streaming. When OBS was closed, uh, that was super fast, but uh, not the case anymore. And then what we can do, we don't, I mean, I've checked that before starting the stream. We don't need to, to go through uh, Maven, the command line interface. We can just do build here. Finish building, and then we right click on Giphy plugins and we click on debug. What this means is that I Giphy and the plugins are going to execute, but we can now stop the execution of Giphy, of the program, at any point we want, at any line of code. And as you see in NetBeans, you can visualize that with the red lines. If you click in the margin, uh, this highlights the line where you are at, and this means that the code will stop executing at this line when it reaches it. So GIF is opening. It's and so my, what well, I've, so we are opening the New York Times. I don't know if we should have, yeah, um, and then the selection. Uh, is it going to work? It doesn't, right? The selection keeps changing and we have no, we never have the code hitting this uh, this line. Otherwise, you know, we would know it because it would turn green. The line would turn green saying, well, uh, the code has reached this line. because, I don't know, maybe that's because these lines should be, maybe that the selection manager should be instantiated once we have a graph and not before. So what I'm gonna do is No, that's not clear. All of that is not clear at all. That's complicated. How can I have the UI of Giphy to refresh when something is moving on it? I'm almost there, right? Because it has to have, it has to be related to that.
So you know when a f event is fired, When an event is fired, a change event is generated, and for every change listeners, the, the method state changed is called. So, So we should have the method being called. It's just that the viz controller, I should, I don't know, it seems it's as if as if it had no relation to the graph being currently opened. So it's as if this bit of code there should be, you know, this bit of code that I have written today, it's as if it should go elsewhere. Just in case, I'm going to make sure that these lines of code are taken into account. Uh, you know, that the plugin has indeed refreshed, just to make sure I'm not uh, uh, working on, an, on a version of the plugin that, that doesn't take these lines into account. Okay, I did. Well, I'm glad I checked. Uh, okay, this code is not taken into account. The plugin has not, uh, for some reason, the plugin has not been updated with the, this, with the most recent lines of code, so it couldn't work. So let's fix that first. plugin has compiled. Now, just to be on the safe side, um, even if that should work from NetBeans, but it seems it doesn't, right? So I'm going to do, just do M Maven package from the command line to make sure, because I know that works. I know that, just to be clear, I know that it uh, it does compile with the most recent version of the plugin. Oh, that's what we have used in the past weeks, and that worked OK. 
Okay. Okay, good. And now I'm back into NetBeans and I'm doing a right click debug. And hopefully this should um, debug Gephi and the plugin by taking into account the latest version of the plugin. And so the line should stop, the code should stop there because I've put a breaking point and it should turn green. If it doesn't, we have an issue and it seems we do have an issue, right? Because it doesn't stop where it should. You see, it didn't stop there. So it means the plugin is not taken into account. Um, okay, so let's, I think one of the That's really a mystery. I'm going to add a second breakpoint. <laughs> Doesn't change anything, but um, OK. Um, debug again. Okay, breakpoint there. So why doesn't, and then what you can do when you debug, so as I said, it stops where you have put a breakpoint in the margin, and then you can then execute the program line by line. Uh, the shortcut is F8, the, the key F8 for uh, in NetBeans. Each time you click F8, uh, the, the next line of code is being executed. So as you see, oh, there is a mistake. There is something wrong here. That's why it never hits invocation target exception. What is, what the, what's the issue here? And when did it add, which line did it occur? Okay, so let's redo it. So it has thrown an exception. No, wor no, no wonder we didn't go to the red line. But where is the exception occurring? That's weird. OK, that works, that works, that works. We are getting the visual controller class. It works. And then we get the selection manager. And I think this is where it breaks. But let's try. It works. So this is where it breaks. Setting the selection update while dragging to true breaks things. So why set selection update? Yeah, it breaks. Well, I don't care. I'm going to just remove it because I had added it just so removing it and relaunching. I wonder why, but uh... so you see debugging is just a lifesaver. So at this point, we should. No, what? What's happening again? It has broken. It didn't go to the end. I think adding. To... Why? 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 Okay, let's 
Oh, I know why, because I did not, uh, I mean, when you modify the code, you should clean and build. I didn't clean and build the plugin. Okay, so we build the plugin. Uh, then we can just do build here, I think. I think, I'm not exactly sure, but I think. I think we don't have to, to go through the, the command line interface. This is our fallback option, basically. OK, so we have built the plugin by removing this line that was throwing an exception. We have integrated the updated plugin into Gephi, and now we run uh, Gephi in debug mo mode, and we expect we expect the, the program to stop at this line that is highlighted in, in red. please yes good so we know so f8 oh no it throws an exception too what a, what a crime why why i do nothing wrong I just add a change listener and the thing breaks. Come on, give me a break. So why? Oops, not super useful. So why? Uh, let's go to this. So if we say add, I mean, this is the code of the method where the selection manager can be added. Uh, I mean, we can add a, a change listener. Add change listener. We do add one. And it should just add it without complaining. So what's the issue here? What's the issue? Our method is, oh, no, it's fine. The method is perfectly fine. I mean, what's the issue here? So let's see how is Giphy adding change listener Oops.
前ダメにあっ、AC ハイトワークス。OK、This controller get instance. It's through get instance. <laughs> Don't ask me why. That if there is a glimpse of hope, yeah, it seems you see. See, there are plenty of change listeners. Uh -huh. Nice. 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 We see how things from the UI get. We see how things from the UI get. Hey, nice. Nice. I think that's where, so I'm going to bookmark this one. I think I see how the UI can be updated depending on the, how can I bookmark that? This is the place where I can uh, learn how to, I need to bookmark this one for to for next time uh, well i'm gonna just add it to the resources for this stream yes i think we get it Horses. oops so these are the resources for this stream session today is january 25 useful resources uh the uh, the class in Gephi where um, UI elements get updated. When the selection of the graph changes. Uh, and I'm going to put the link there. We're going to go back to this file next week because we are almost over today. But I would just like to try it. Uh, not doing much, but at least try. Yes, exactly that. The v so adding a change listener uh through you know this get instance stuff do you see it here no it's there so in our code it means that i don't do all this fancy stuff which usually is a way to do things in gephi but it's simply that you create uh, you, not even that. You just create a change listener, and the way you add it to to the to the controller for visualization is that line of code. At least, hopefully. Okay. And now I compile a plugin once again. I'm pretty optimistic. I mean, I'm always optimistic. But this time more than last time.
Okay, plugin is, com is almost compiled. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You can do it. Okay, now I compile Giphy with this plugin. It's, oh, by the way, what we learned today, I should just write it down there. What we learned, uh, it is, it is safe to compile the plugin and run it in Giphy from NetBeans. This way, from the plugin itself. Clean and build. Then build from the Giphy plugins parent project. Then run or debug from the Giphy plugins parent project as well. But anyway, that's just uh, okay, so we're here, and now we can launch Giphy in debug mode and hopefully adding this listener to the visual controller will not break things. and F8 to go to the next line and hopefully it doesn't break. It doesn't break. Yoohoo! Okay, so we can continue. We can so once you have when once you don't want to continue debugging line by line, you click on F5 and the code just you know continues to the next breakpoint. So F5, we don't have an next breakpoint, so the code just runs to normally. And to remind you, I, I hope that... So first, let me go back to NetBeans. Do I have a breakpoint on the... I should have a breakpoint here. Right, I want to see if when we select different nodes and edges, whether this method gets triggered. So we load the New York Times. I don't select anything. Well, and then I'm going to try to select a node and see if, you know, NetBeans reacts. So I just selected a node. This one here. And it didn't change anything. We, we don't see a because I did select it right. Oh yeah, I didn't. I think I did. Ah, look at that. It has, yes. It has been triggered with some, some uh, delay. Uh, I don't know why, but oh, it works. So yes, next week we will be able to uh, thanks to the file I've just found and that I've put in the resources, I think that we now have a way to, uh, to, to launch or to, you know, to treat, to, yeah, to execute our text mining operations. Each time the selection is changing. Uh, of course, we will introduce a delay because we don't want that, you know, if there is uh, a change in selection like 50 times per second because the user is just dragging the mouse over the network. We don't want it to trigger 50 times the text mining operation because it, it will uh, it will completely uh, overload the capacities of, of the computer, I suppose. Uh, so we will introduce a, a delay. 
uh, and with this precaution, uh, I, I'm sure next time we will uh, get uh, the desired effect, which is that whenever you drag the mouse over the network, instantaneously or quasi instantaneously, like in, in half a second, you get the you get the, the top 10 words that correspond to each re to the region you are currently covering. And, and that should be intensely satisfying because uh, because in my view that's a new way to explore a network which is uh, not uh, not uh, you know not uh, uh, frequent. You don't see that often, and and I think it's going to be really. I mean, this is why when um, Veronica uh, told me about this idea. Uh, this is why I was uh, really uh, excited about that. I think that we can really, uh, yeah, create a, a, a very intuitive and appealing way to uh, to catch the, a summary of uh, the region of a network uh, in this way. Okay, so that was hard, very hard for today, but uh, once again, it worked. So have a great week, and see you next week for uh, you know the the thing happening in practice. So I'm closing Giphy, closing NetBeans. What we learned, it is safe to compile. Yeah, we learned that, definitely. We learned that it is easy to uh, it is easy to add a listener to the viz controller, which will uh, which will um, fire a method each time the selection changes. Oh, by the way, um, by the way, how can we retrieve? Oh, I've closed NetBeans, too bad. Well, next time uh, I'm going to be curious, how can we retrieve the currently selected nodes and ages? Is it by calling, I suppose it's by calling again the this controller. Okay. I see, I see, well, I'm, I'm just going to close again NetBeans. I, I don't want to, to keep this stream going too long, for too long. Thanks, Mathieu, again, and see you next week.